Welcome to NP Certification Q&A, presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. This podcast is for NP students studying to pass their NP certification exam. Getting to the correct test answers means breaking down the exam questions themselves. Leading NP expert, Dr. Margaret Fitzgerald, shares her knowledge and experience to help you dissect the anatomy of a test question so you can better understand how to arrive at the correct test answer. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. Which of the following examples presents a potential medical malpractice scenario? A, a 25-year-old who is being treated for acute otitis media who reports penicillin allergy to the healthcare provider. A prescription for amoxicillin is advised. The patient takes the amoxicillin without adverse reaction. B, a 40-year-old with acute bacterial rhinosinusitis reports to his healthcare provider that his symptoms have not improved after two days of taking a dose-appropriate prescription for amox with clavulone. C, prior to taking a medication, a 28-year-old realizes the wrong drug was dispensed by the pharmacy. She returns the prescription and the correct medication is dispensed. A 50-year-old patient who had an abnormal mammogram who was not advised by her health care provider about appropriate follow-up. A mammogram one year later confirms the prior abnormal findings. The healthcare provider now shares the findings and the patient is referred for further evaluation and breast biopsy. The correct answer here is option D. First, let's take a look at what kind of a question this is. Given its focus is on malpractice, this is a professional issues question. And, you know, this could occur on any of the NP certification exams. Certain exams have special sections on professional issues, but really all of the exams will have a bit of professional issues woven into them. Let's take a look at some background information. One description of medical malpractice is as follows. It occurs when a health professional neglects to provide the appropriate treatment, take appropriate action, or give substandard treatment that causes harm, injury, or death to a patient. Another view is the failure of a person with specialized education and training, as all healthcare providers have, to act in a reasonable and prudent manner. There are four components to medical malpractice which the plaintiff must prove. The first is duty of care. Duty of care is established when there is a patient-provider relationship. Remember, most of the time, this relationship occurs within the parameters of a healthcare practice, a primary care practice, hospital system, whatever it is. But the relationship can also be as casual as a neighbor comes to the NP and says, I've run out of my high blood pressure medicine and I can't get through to my PCP, could you do me a favor and just refill it for the next month? Keep that in mind when you find yourself as a new grad NP being asked for prescriptions for medications by friends, family, et cetera. You need to set boundaries. You have to have a patient-provider relationship in place and a record to complete to be safe. In prescribing. Next would be breach of standard of care. When looking at the term standard of care, this refers to a reasonable degree of care a person should provide to another person, particularly in a professional relationship or healthcare settings. NPs are duty bound to use such reasonable, ordinary care, skill, and diligence. As nurse practitioners in good standing in the same geographic area and the same general type of practice as other similar providers. When an NP is sued for malpractice, and this of course would apply to any healthcare provider sued for malpractice, the standard of care is argued in court. 
The attorneys will hire expert witnesses, usually other NPs, who will give testimony describing the actions as a reasonably prudent NP has taken in that situation. Next is injury or proximal cause. For a malpractice case to proceed, there must be evidence that as a result of negligent care not meeting standard, there was injury or harm caused. Proximal cause refers to the fact that the injury was in fact caused by that breach of standard of care. Now, with those key components in mind, and yes, when you dig deeply into medical malpractice, there could be a number of other significant issues that contribute, but that's really like the backbone of what we're talking about. With this information in mind, let's take another look at the question. As has been mentioned in other Fitzgerald certification Q&As, you must be able to analyze and synthesize the information in order to arrive at the best answer. Which of the following examples represents a potential malpractice scenario? A, a 25-year-old who has been treated for acute otitis media reports, penicillin allergy to the healthcare provider. A prescription for amoxicillin is given. The patient takes the amoxicillin without adverse reaction. Well, in this situation, the provider was negligent because the patient said, I have penicillin allergy, and the provider went ahead and gave a penicillin form, amoxicillin. So the provider was negligent, but no harm resulted. Indeed, probably what happened was this is one of the vast majority of people who say they have penicillin allergy when they actually don't have penicillin allergy. And so the medicine proved to be okay for this person to take. But because there was no harm, the malpractice component of injury was not met. And this is not the correct answer. Option B, a 40-year-old patient with acute bacterial rhinosinusitis reports to his health care provider that his symptoms have not improved after taking two days of a dose-appropriate prescription for a MOX with clavulone. This is also not correct. Failure to approve after three days of appropriate antimicrobial therapy and ABRS is not uncommon, and this person's only been taking the mid for two days. Indeed, the ABRS guidelines state that if there's no improvement after three to five days of appropriate therapy, then another antimicrobial should be prescribed. This would not meet the standard of injury. There was no breach of care because amox with clab is one of the most accepted, indeed, the most commonly prescribed antimicrobials for the treatment of ABRS, absolutely within acceptable practice. And in fact, if you're thinking, well, what would you do with a patient like this if they contact the office? What you would say is, okay, you've been on the antibiotic for a couple of days, give it a few more days. If you're not better after five days, please let us know. And certainly let us know if you get worse over the next few days. And usually what will happen is on day three, a lot of times people whose sinuses really bothering them a lot, all of a sudden the sinuses start to clear up. Option C, prior to taking a medication, a 28-year-old realizes the wrong drug was dispensed at the pharmacy. She returns the prescription and the correct medication is dispensed. Well, once again, clearly there was a breach of care standard, but this was at the level of the pharmacy, not the health care provider, at least the way it's been worded. Thankfully, the patient noted it and did not take the faulty prescription. Therefore, while I'm sure there was great inconvenience and worry on the patient's part, there was no injury. Option D, a 50-year-old patient has an abnormal mammogram who was not advised by her health care provider about appropriate follow-up. A mammogram one year later confirms prior findings. The healthcare provider shares findings with the patient, and the patient is referred for further evaluation and breast biopsy. Obviously, this is the best answer. One of the most common reasons for a malpractice lawsuit is a delay in cancer diagnosis. 
Well, we're not told what the biopsy results were. We were advised that there was a prior abnormal mammogram and the patient was simply not advised. And that is a breach of standard of care because standard of care says that patients are promptly advised about abnormal findings, whether it's a mammogram, a blood test, whatever it would be, and that the provider works with the patient on appropriate next steps. Key takeaway, just saying the words medical malpractice can be frightening. In order to avoid this, the healthcare provider needs to know its components. Knowledge is the key to prevention of medical malpractice. Thank you for listening to NP Certification Q&A, presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. And for more NP resources, visit FHEA.com.